Welcome back to Celebrate the Struggle, folks. I am your host, Jennifer Hobbs, and I am here with Keith McKeever. He is a fellow Air Force veteran. He is now in real estate, and he has his own podcast. And I can't wait to hear more about you. Keith, welcome, welcome. Well, thanks for having me on your show. So kick it off, Keith. Tell us a little, you know, I only listed off a couple of things about you, but tell us about Keith McKeever, where you come from, like just a little bit about your story and your journey and what's led until this point. And then okay. we'll get in, we'll get into like kind of where you're at now. Well, you said uh, I'm an Air Force veteran. I'm in real estate and that has been in one way, shape or form been most of my life. About five years old, my parents decided to build their dream home. They built a log home on two acres out in the country. And uh, they were both in real estate selling selling homes, homes to people. They had a couple of investment properties, but fast forward throughout the 90s, they were selling log home kits. They were selling homes. Uh, they were rentals, flips. So I literally grew up around real estate. Never thought about the military much. Uh, my dad had gotten drafted in Vietnam and was allergic to penicillin. He found out after getting a shot and he took two steps to go out the door and woke up in the hospital. Oh. And that, was, that was the end of his time in the army. Uh, in Vietnam, I guess they were like, yeah, penicillin, uh, if you're allergic to it, we got no need for you. So. Wow. Um, interesting. Yeah, I know, right. As he always told the story. He's like, yeah, I, I got the shot, you know, where everybody gets the shot and took a couple right. steps, got another shot, turned to walk out the door. And he goes, I don't even remember falling down the steps. He's just woke up in the hospital, like, you know, hours later, like what the heck happened? Where am I? Was it a so, lot of steps? Uh, I think it was just a couple of steps. You know, okay. I don't think he got really beat up, but I, I guess from what I understood, he was a lot more allergic to penicillin than than he, you know, than anybody would have guessed. I guess, or I don't know. Wow. I don't know what their medical processes were in, in 1968 joining the army, but anyway, he uh, he never got to serve, and then he passed away when I was 16 in 2001. My stepdad came into picture a couple of years later. He was an Air Force vet. He had served in Vietnam. And after I got my associate's degree, I was kind of bored with life and my and the army called me actually. And, you know, tried to get me with the, oh, you've got an associate's degree. You can be a warrant officer, fly helicopters. Well, at 20 years old, that sounds pretty cool. Turns out I had no depth perception. So that was never going to happen. <laughs> and, uh, so, so my stepdad, you know, came home that day and I was like, hey, Bill, you know, the army called today. And he was just like, shh, don't say that around your mom. Like, if you're going to freak her out. You know, this was 2006. Mm. And and he's like, if you're thinking about this, go talk to the Air Force or the Navy first. So ended up talking to the Air Force, never talked to the Navy, never talked to any other branches. I walked in and, you know, uh, the rest is history. Didn't right. take me too long to sign the documents and all that. I either wanted to be aerial gunner, firefighter, or security forces. Didn't really have a job. Um, I had gone through MEPS and all that, but nothing really confirmed. But I was 20, you know, and, and he called me one day right around my birthday and was like, Hey, look, I got, I got a guy who broke his leg, guaranteed security force job leaves in like two weeks. Do you want it? I thought, Hey, you know, if I don't take this now, I'm never going to take this leap and, and go do this. Mm -hmm. And so I was, how long do I have to think? And he goes like, I need an answer today. And <laughs> so, you know, over thinking it over once again, I was like, Hey, if I don't make this, if I don't do this now, I may never do it. You know, because I thought about joining the military as a kid, but I think like every little boy <laughs> growing up in the 80s, 90s kind of thinks about it. Sure. And uh, yeah, so I was like, you know, sure, let's do it. So I ended up security forces. Did two deployments to Iraq, went to Ecuador, met a lot of great friends, had, had an, an amazing time for the most part. And uh, then I got out, sold furniture for a year. And then my mom convinced me to join her in real estate. So I've been in, I, I was partners with her for nine years up until just, about a, about a week ago, actually went off on my own. Uh, but we're still, still both selling real estate and that's, uh, that's where my life has gone. And so clearly the allergy to penicillin didn't run in the family. Yeah, come down no, that to. <laughs> and it just, I say, go ahead. I was, I wouldn't say it was uh pleasant getting a shot. Like, were you super days. nervous? Like how, how's this going to go? Like, am no, I gonna, I, I think by that point in time, I knew I wasn't allergic I don't remember getting a penicillin shot as a kid, but I, I, I don't think that thought really ever crossed right. my mind. Hmm. And then when I, I was so stuck on you saying that you didn't have any depth perception, like how interesting it's, it's, 
I, I think that was I just a lie. Thinking about oh, because okay. the MEPS said I had no depth perception. So here's what always killed me about this test. You know, they're like, look in this in this thing, right? There's three circles. Tell us which one of those circles stands out more to you. And I sit there and I was like, I, I was like, ma'am, I I don't. None of these circles jump out to me. Okay, how about <laughs> the next line? No, none of those do either. And it's like, you know, I I never really had noticed any issues with depth perception or anything in my life. And then as security forces, I mean, we fired the M9, the, the M4, 249, 240. I mean, we fired them all. I never seemingly had any problems mm -hmm. really seeing depth. I just think their test was flawed. So yeah. anyway, you know, you flunk the test in you flunk the test in MEPS, they're they're gonna ax a couple of different career options for you. So uh-huh. So how long are you, are you still in? No, I got out uh, about 10 years ago. Okay. I thought you had said that. How long were you in? Five years, seven months and a, and a few days. Yeah. Something like that. So then your mom got you into real estate and, and, oh, their log home. I'm sure that was beautiful. I love, love, love log homes. Does that, is that still in your family that home that they built or did they end up? No, she ended up selling that a few years ago as her and my stepdad. I, they're, they're not super old, but as they got older, they're like, Hey, look, this is going to be harder for us to take care of. It was down a dirt road, middle of the country. If it, we get, if got, I mean, the road never got plowed. So you had to yeah. have four wheel drive to get in and out. And they were just like, you know what, let's sell now and move somewhere that's more convenient. So they ended mm -hmm. up moving into town, but um, actually, ironically, she sold it to a couple and then she sold it, I think, two years ago for them. And so now it's a, you know, the third owner in the house. But that was my parents' dream home. And it was this weird, it was weird growing up because everybody knew that I lived in a log home and everybody thought it was really cool. And I was five when they built it. So I don't really remember anything but that. So as a teenager, mm -hmm. everybody's like, it's so cool. You live in a log home. And I'm like, it's actually really cool. You live in a regular home. Like, <laughs> I don't know what that's like. <laughs> you know, it was. Right. Were, You're like you know, in their just, house, like, oh, oh, look at all this drywall. drywall. <laughs> <laughs> that is funny. Yeah. I mean, we um, had some drywall in the house, but yeah, I mean, most of it's, yeah. I mean, the, the inside mm -hmm. and the outside of the walls were all log for the most part. So, right. It was weird. So, how'd your mom take it when you told her that you were going to enlist? She was pretty upset because, once again, it was 2006. Right. And so, by the time she met with the recruiter, I think I had met with him two or three times. And he sat down and he's like, you know, look at these, these are the jobs this is before the, the guy broke his leg. I don't think she was super happy about some of them. She knew I wanted to become a cop because I had an associate in law enforcement. Mm -hmm. So, she was like, okay, I understand that. I understand firefighter. My uncle was a firefighter. So she was, you know, could kind of grasp that, you know, definitely. I don't think what you want your kids to go into because they're inherently dangerous anyway, but like, okay, all right. That's not bad. But Ariel Gunner scared the living heck out of her. She mm -hmm. was just like, wait, flying on helicopters with a gun. No, I don't think so. Mm -hmm. And the recruiter just flat out, you know, I hate to say recruiters lie, but the recruiters like, Oh no, he won't have to deploy unless he wants to. <laughs> I don't know why we all bought that one. I think my stepdad just bit his tongue because he knew it was coming. Uh, I I was like, okay, cool. All right, works for me. I don't care. I just wanted to go do something, go do, have some fun, get some life experience. And my mom totally, I'm guessing she bought it hook, line, and sinker. So um, go figure. I found out after tech school, I came home for two, three weeks, something like that on the recruiter assistance. And I was talking to my sponsor in Japan because Yokota Air Base was my first duty station. And he's like, oh, dude, you're already on the wall. Like, your name is up there. You are 100% deploying to southern Iraq. You're going to a prison camp early January of 07. And it was like, oh, you know, that's when it started getting real. Like, man, I'm not even to Japan yet. <laughs> mm -hmm. You should have waited until I was at the airport getting on the plane. Right. You know, good thing I wasn't one of those guys. It was like, see you later. I ain't doing that. Uh -huh. But, you know, the rest is history. So yeah, she was, she was pretty nervous about it, especially yeah. when she found out that, like, oh, wait, now it's getting real, you know. So she was a nervous wreck for a few years. And no wonder why she's like, oh, they got this real estate over here. You want to get into this, son? Like, <laughs> this is a little less dangerous. Come on over here. Absolutely. <laughs> so tell us about Battle Buddy Podcast. You have your own podcast. Um, when did you start it? Uh, clearly from the title, like 
you got a mission behind that. I want to hear about it. Let's hear it. Yeah. So as a realtor, I, you know, sometimes drive 15 minutes, sometimes 30 minutes, you know, maybe an hour to, to an appointment it just depends. I mean, I'm in a pretty rural area for the most part. And so I would listen to a lot of podcasts and it kind of dawned on me one day what I was seeing on Facebook, various Facebook groups, a lot of vets just struggle with different issues and they would just throw their issues out there in those groups of like, Hey, I'm struggling with my spouse or I'm struggling with addiction or I'm struggling with personal finance issues, whatever. Started noticing that there was kind of different trends, relationships, no connection to the military, you know, employment, housing, right. physical and med- physical and, and mental health needs and stuff. And they all kind of clumped into a handful of different groups. And I thought one day in early 2020, right before the pandemic hit, I said, what if I created a podcast? I mean, you just need a microphone mm-hmm. for the most part. Started looking into it. And I'm like, cool, microphone, anchor, something to talk about. Stood it over for a couple of months. Then the pandemic hit, put it on, on the back burner until I think about June or July of 2020. And then I was like, okay, well, got to have a guest. So I reached out to a friend of mine uh, through the honor flight program. We met through there and I, I interviewed him as my first guest. Um, and I knew about five minutes into that interview, I was like, there's something here, his story of TBIs, PTSD, suicide, uh, his, uh, suicide attempts, how a service dog saved his life. I mean, it was just literally a few minutes into it that I was like, wow, him sharing his story, puts it out there in the universe. So somebody could listen six months from now or six years from now, 10, 15 years from now, and they could still relate with it and maybe save their life. And so it's kind of evolved from there. Talk about any top topic relevant to the military and veteran community, military spouse community, you name it, highlighting resources. And, and my main key points on every episode is to make sure it's something that's actionable, that's educational or inspirational to let some veteran know that they're not alone. We all have, you know, the, the battle buddy thing is goes by different names in each branch, but it's the same philosophy of we don't, we don't leave people alone. Yeah. And there's always somebody there walking with you. So it's kind of where, where it all came from. I dig it. And I bet that was just incredible having that guy as your first guest and having that amazing story and it just being the clear picture of yes, Keith, this is what you need to do. I And that is exactly what I want to celebrate the struggle to be for people, you know, like talking about those things and, and what we struggle with, but also talking about the resources out there. And so I look forward to listening to it and um, learning more from there. Absolutely. Hey, so one of the things I totally like to ask people because I think self-care is really important. I feel like, you know, we can't really help other people until like, we got to help ourselves first. We got to be in the right mind and, and make that a priority. And so I always like to ask people kind of like, what do you do for yourself and your own self-care? Cause I want it to be a priority number one. And I also want people to get ideas that maybe they didn't think about, or um, also understand that maybe even just sitting outside and looking at nature can be time to yourself or time with your family. It could be self-care. So what do you, Keith, in order to um, give back to yourself and care for yourself, what do you do? That's definitely some good, some good stuff there. Cause you're right. You, you can help people to a certain extent without helping yourself, but eventually you're going to hit a brick wall. Mm-hmm. It's going to hurt. And it's gonna hurt. Uh, uh, <laughs> it's it's gonna hurt bad. For me, mine was was the fall of 2020. Actually, right about the time as as I was kind of launching that first episode, it was you know starting that. Uh, I was in school for three years. I, I just got my bachelor's in December, so I was starting to hit some harder subjects in school. I was going full time plus business and a pandemic. My kids were at home, you know, doing their their schooling at home, and it was like, man, I was juggling too much. And it was like, this is, you know, this is it. I need to do something. So for me, one of the things was realizing that I needed help. I needed somebody to talk to. And so I called the VA and said, look, I want to talk to a counselor. I've been seeing one about every four to six weeks since then. Mm -hmm. Just kind of talk through different things. Kind of that just helps just have somebody that's accountable, you know, say, you know, are you taking 
steps A, B, C, and D. But also uh, Lane Ballone, who's one of the leaders of the Vetrepreneur Tribe on Facebook, um, he talks in our in the Warrior Council a lot about you know quality of life, you know, and taking that time and structuring it. And after I first started hearing that, I started taking that with what the counselor was saying and and start building that time into my schedule. And so for the most part, unless something's pressing for work, you know, on the weekends, I try to wrap up anything I'm doing in my office by six o'clock, you know, five or six o'clock on Saturday. So I can watch some TV with my family, hang out with my kids, you know, try and build some time in there to play some video games with them, do some things that they want to do, you know, because kids are into all kinds of different things. And sometimes they don't want to do what you want to do. You got to do what they want to do. What? <laughs> sometimes like, like play Minecraft or something like that, you know, is wouldn't really consider it super fun, but mm -hmm. if it's fun to them, I'll sit there right. for a couple of hours and play. And, uh, you know, just so just try to, to build that time in, mm -hmm. you know, listen to podcasts, listen to things that they give you joy and just kind of trying to build something into each day to, keep you somewhat balanced. Yes. Sounds like my kind of self-care as well. I do dig podcasts and I look forward to listening to yours. You said when you were talking a couple of things that um, jumped out at me, you know, you said you found yourself just juggling too much. Just the other day when I was talking to my, um, a fellow battle buddy who, uh, Jared Perry, the wild man, he started coming on to my, um, podcast on a segment on Thursdays and uh like I said I served with him so he's also a good friend of our families and he's going through a time period right now where he uh you know had identified that he's juggling too much and one of the things we had talked about on there is like just being in touch enough with yourself to know that and identify that that right there is growth you know that's self-care right there when you've gotten to a point in your life where like you can be honest with yourself and and give yourself some grace and be like okay nope this isn't good like so let me let me step back another thing you said that I want to hear more about you said um Lane Ballone in that group which I need to go ch check him out because I don't think I've seen him um Warrior Council Council is that a podcast as well? Uh, no, it's a like a business mastermind group. And, oh, okay. Yeah, you know, we meet like on Thursday mornings, and that's kind of one of the things that he tends to say in there. You know, remember it's all about quality of life. You know, and, and that just because we're in business, and just because we're trying to grow and do things there, doesn't mean that you can forget about those those things that kind of keep you grounded. You know, and kind of keep that balance because nobody's balanced fifty fifty, right? It's going to be a different right. picture for everybody, but. You got to figure out what works for you because the thing that kind of came to mind just a second ago was, was just like, you know, just finding what works for your schedule, you know, for, for each person, because everybody's life is different. You know, some people have kids, some don't, some have more stressful jobs than others. Some don't, some people are single, some people are married, mm -hmm. some people are in a complicated status. <laughs> You, know, mm -hmm. you never know. So I love you know, that you do some, it's complicated. I love yeah, that you say that. There's a, there's a few people like that. Um, but yeah, you just got to find out what works for you, you know? And you Absolutely. Just and this is kind of a random thought, you know, like squirrel thought, but when you say like, you got to figure out what works for you. I have this like image of like on some days where I feel bad, you know, like if I am, am trying to be better at exercising and making it to the gym, trying to do a lot more focus on strength training. And so on running days, sucks, right? Huh? Cause running sucks. Yeah. Who? <laughs> uh, no. Um, <laughs> and so on days where like, if I haven't made it and I'm like, I really want to try to. So what works for me in my life is like, I will fold some clothes and then I'll pick up the weights and I'll do a rep and then I'll fold some more clothes and then I'll do a rep. Meanwhile, I finally get some time with Netflix. So I'm like getting three things done at one time, or I'm listening to a podcast. So like laundry reps, podcast, laundry, reps, Netflix, whatever works for you folks, make it happen. <laughs> yeah, I tend to get up. I've got a family room behind me and I'll just middle of the day. I mean, nobody's here. Uh, my wife might be upstairs, but 
you know, I'll just kind of pace back and forth. I'll just get up and that way I'm at least getting out of my seat and I'm pacing back and forth, getting some sort of movement in. Absolutely. I'm not staring at the screen all the time. You know, if I got something to think about for work or try and process it instead of sitting here staring at the screen, I'll just get up and kind of walk around and just kind of let my thoughts flow, you know, Mm -hmm. just kind of break it up a little bit. Absolutely. Okay. Before my last question, I have got to know this for people that are listening to this, they're not going to be able to see what's behind you, but for people watching the YouTube uh, video, they'll be able to see it. Is that a microphone trophy back there? An old microphone Uh, trophy? Yeah. It's like a wire one. I got it like Hobby Lobby or something like that. Cool. Cool. Okay. Here's my last question. So Keith, I just want to, I want to know, like, what is your wildest dreams and goals? Um, Anything that you just feel like would fill your life even more than what you are doing now, like that you just feel like you could leave the legacy on this world. And not even necessarily a legacy, just like big hopes and hopes and dreams. And maybe that is continuing to reach people through your podcast well yeah uh, that's that's definitely one of them there's a lot of different angles i mean there's things i'd like to do in business there's you know things with the podcast but for me a lot of it comes down to having two little boys mm-hmm. and you know it's you mentioned legacy i lost my dad when i was 16 so mm-hmm. legacy is something i've always kind of known about because i remember his funeral i remember things that you know were going on and actually he was in real estate so I get my license nine years ago and all of a sudden I'm working alongside people who worked alongside him years ago. Oh, wow. And I had people that would be like, you know what? You're so much like your dad in this way or that way, or we have so much respect for your dad. Boy, do we miss him? You know, and things like that. And it's like, wow, that's really cool. You know, people were like, that's yeah. awesome. that you work working the same job your dad did. Now you're working, you know, was working alongside my mom for a while. Um, but you know, it's, it was really just kind of neat to have that. So my goal is to just, continue to get my relationship even better with my kids absolutely and be there for them you know do whatever I can to set them up to be successful in life whatever that picture looks like for them um you know because I you know I didn't have well I only had 16 years with my dad yeah both my grand both my grandfathers well yeah one of them died when I was five the other one died when I was 11 so I never really had my dad around never really had my grandfathers around and I'm looking forward to that is my legacy is I can't hope my boys grow up, be successful, meet the person in their dreams, have a great relationship, maybe bring some grandkids in this world. Cause one of the, one of the things I just, I'd prefer to be known for is just a, a good family man versus, you know, business is one thing the podcast is another, but if, if family is not number one, maybe for me anyway, family is not number one. My priorities are a little out of whack. That is the perfect answer, Keith. What a great thing to to put out into the space of the world and on my podcast. Thank you for sharing that. Other people, I hope that they listen to that and really take that to heart. Oh, okay. You made my eyeballs sweat. I am such a, am I going through menopause? This is scary. No, I'm just kidding. Thank you so much, Keith, for coming on the show. I'll make sure that I put all of your information in the show notes. Everyone, make sure you go check out Battle Buddy Podcast as I'm going to do the same. And thanks again, Keith, for coming on to get comfortable with the uncomfortable. Thank you. Thanks for having me once again.